Hi, I'm Freddie Spencer reporting after the 2017 Dutch Grand Prix in Assen, the Cathedral of Motorsports, one of the great tracks from a long time ago that is purely motorcycle driven. It's been changed over the years. It's been shortened uh, since the heyday, in fact, even when I raced there. But it's still an incredible circuit, and it is very challenging for the riders and machines. And this weekend showed the incredible racing that we have in MotoGP today. But I want to digress a little bit. When I was in my 20s, I had the great opportunity to go and watch a great basketball player play live and in person, in person at the Los Angeles Forum. His name was Larry Bird. He played for my favorite team when I was a kid, named the Boston Celtics. And in fact, his teammate on that team, uh, the center, was named Robert Parrish, who was from Shreveport, Louisiana, so there was a little bit of that connection there. But I'd always been amazed at watching Larry Bird play. He was about 6'8", six, 6'8", uh, six inches tall, and he played power forward. And his gift was his technique, and you could see that the way he played his ability to be able to get the ball off, get the shot off. He wasn't the fastest player. He certainly couldn't jump that high. He was from French Lick, Indiana. And I was really impressed when I watched him play. And I realized that his greatest gift, besides un really understanding how to play the game, his ability to maximize all of his talent, was his anticipation. Not only his anticipation of what he needed to do and his reaction, but be able to use that anticipation by knowing exactly what the other player was going to do, sometimes as before they knew it, just anticipating their movements. That's an important thing to be able to have to be a great athlete. It's not just ability, but it's how you utilize that ability. Going to this weekend at Assen, we knew, of course, that the championship had been really changed this year with Dovey's abilities, what he's done over these last two years. He talked about his mindset, as I talked about in the previous show. This week, I want to talk about that anticipating, that ability to be able to understand exactly what you need to do at the right time. First, I want to talk about Cal Crutchlow. Now, Cal, congratulations. He got a new contract with HRC, something that he'd been wanting for a long time. You know, I, I think Cal is one of those writers who gets the most out of his ability. And let's not forget that he's had podiums and great race results on three different manufacturers, on Yamaha, Ducati, and on a Honda. And signing this new HRC contract after his two wins last year is something that I believe is certainly deserved. But Cal said a very important, interesting thing after the race, and something I understand so well is you noticed as the rain started falling, he picked up the pace and was able to get up front in the battle with, with Mark for that last podium position. Why was he able to do that? Because he, he talked about that in the dry parts of the track, he kept the tires up to temperature and he utilized that speed. It's something I did all the time. Take risk in an area where you know that you can get the most advantage. Not look at the entire circuit as, as it's wet but understanding each part of it, really paying attention to that. And Cal does that very well. It's one reason why he's so good in adverse conditions. Now, let's talk about Mark Marquez and Johan Zarco. Johan Zarco, we obviously know he has a great amount of ability. He's a two-time Moto2 Moto world champion. But you remember the incident that he had with Valentino early in the year where he had that close pass and then he reacted and he seems to be driven in those situations more by emotion than judgment. I mean, that, tra that, that pass he tried to make on Valentino in the race was out way over the line as far as risk. And there was really no way it was going to happen. He put himself at risk, but even more importantly, everyone else. And Valentino talked about afterwards, there was no way it was going to happen. It's judgment. And it would be interesting to see as he goes along here, because we know he has good ability, but does he have that ability to be able to make good judgment and anticipating, not just what he's doing, but uh, what other riders are doing. You would expect a world champion of his level, uh, for Moto2, to be able to kind of understand that. But maybe, again, he's just kind of caught up in the moment, and he's not really thinking it through. Example, Mark Marquez in 13. He had a lot of crashes in the championship on his way to win the world championship that year. And it certainly affected him 
after he won the championship in 14 and then in that battle with Valentino. You remember he made those judgments early in the season in that battle with a couple of races with Valentino that really weren't the smartest thing to do, but he learned from them. And maybe Yohan Zarco can do the same, is not get out there and say things or think things or think that he can pull things off that he really shouldn't. It's not about that. It's about managing that risk. Now, Valentino Rossi, what a great ride for the champion. And he's a perfect example of, of a great champion, and this is why. is Not only his own ability to be able to maximize what he can do, his ability to anticipate, his ability to be able to have good judgment pretty much all the time, but his also ability that he recognizes what the other riders can do. He maximizes his strengths, and he also uses their weaknesses against them. Against them. Remember what I said about recognizing what other athletes can do in, in their situations. That is the key that makes a great champion, and it's one reason why Valentino has been so successful all these years. You saw late in the race, his strength is his ability to be able to be late on the brakes. You can see that when Petrucci made that pass on him, uh, on the lap to go, Valentino charged right back. That was a little bit different than what happened, obviously, in the, the race with Maverick Finales at Le Mans, when he made the mistake and then Maverick got by him and he tried to make that stay up and make that pass late and it didn't work out for him. This was completely different. And so Valentino had a great win. We have to also give a, a good ride to Petrucci, who has really picked it up later in the year, and of course Maverick Vinales, who made the mistake. That was really brought on by that bad qualifying position, and I think he also felt the pressure. He talked about going into the weekend that he needed to win to maintain the points lead. It certainly is made for an exciting championship. It's one of the closest we've ever seen. We have different age of riders with Valentino on one hand, you have Annales and Mark and the young riders on the other, and everyone in between with, with Maverick, with uh, Kyle Crutchlow in there battling and, and certainly keeping things interesting. So I'm really looking forward to this championship. I think that the bikes now are pretty much even in many respects. You'd like to see the Ducati up there as it is. Hopefully, Jorge will pick it up. That's really difficult to watch, his struggles. We'll have to see if he's able to, to kind of get a hold of what he needs to do and maybe work around some of his issues. I think a lot of it is the way he thinks about him. He certainly gets upset and maybe a little bit down. So we'll see if he can pick it up. Certainly going to be a great championship. I'm looking forward to the next race. Hopefully you are too.